The Mets named Mendoza, uh, been bouncing around with the Yankees for a long time. He's highly regarded, good interviews with other teams before David Stearns uh, gave him the Mets job there uh, last week sometime after the uh, dismissal of Buck Showalter. And so Mendoza now coming over from the Yankees has the job of uh, getting the Mets back on track. And I think, listen, I think the Mets are going to bounce back and have a better year than you think as far as 2024 is concerned. First off, everything went wrong last year. We're going to start with Diaz at the, uh, uh, you know, at the winter class at the World Baseball Classic when he broke his the kneecap essentially and uh, was gone for the year. He'll be healthy. That's a big plus right out of the gate. Uh, they're due for some luck with some injuries. Marte play more than 85, 90 games. Better year out of McNeil. I mean, uh, their pitching staff be a little healthier too. Remember last year, Verlander wasn't there early. Scherzer was in and out throughout his three months, four months here. So just from a health standpoint, the Mets next year will be better which will give Mendoza a fighting chance as far as the team is concerned. And I don't buy the idea that the Mets are rebuilding here in a big way. They made the two trades last year to get some young people from their farm system. Acuna, for instance, and the kid they got from Texas, that was to replenish their farm system. But I think if the Mets, you know, got off to a decent start, they do have Senga, they have make some moves in the offseason. They have the makings with, you know, Lindor and Alonzo, and they're not going to, they're going to get Alonzo signed at the end of the day. And McNeil and Marte and Nimmo, I mean, the Mets have a nucleus of a team that can be very competitive in the NL East. And as we have seen here with these teams, of course, the Diamondbacks with 84 wins, perfect example. When you make the playoffs in baseball, it's so unpredictable, anything can happen. And the Mets are not going to basically just write off the 2024 season. So the idea that the Mets are in a rebuilding scenario is a bunch of nonsense. If there is a guy that Steve Cohen wants, David Stearns is going to go get him. They probably uh, have no chance to get uh, Otani. You know, they're checking because they kick the tires around it because, you know, A, the agents will want the Mets to kick the tires around it to maybe increase the asking price. That's number one. And obviously, I don't think Mr. Cohen can resist. So hit call and see if there's any way, shape, or form Otani would want to come to the East and play with the Mets. I don't think that will happen. But I, I do think the kid pitcher from Japan who everybody is raving about, the 5'10 right-hander, I think that's a possibility. Mets had some success with Senga. I mean, they could use many pitching arms in the sport. The Mets are going to be busy, maybe on the periphery of the big free agent, but the Mets will be busy, and they have a very representable team on the field for Mendoza to work with as far as next year goes. And remember, if you're representable and you're a decent ball club, you've got a very good chance to be in the mix at the end of the year, and that means be in the mix at the training deadline, and that means you can use the resources that the owner has and go out there and edify the ball club as far as uh, the second half of the year is concerned. I wouldn't even be surprised if the Mets made a move to get Soto. Uh, I, you know, uh, the owner and the agent have a good relationship. Remember, they discussed that whole thing last year with Correa. They almost got him signed, so I would not... They. They signed Scherzer, so I would not be surprised if they check in on Soto and try to make a move with San Diego to get him. There'd be a lot of competition there. I understand that, but remember, the, Met, the Soto people know if they come to New York and he plays well, he's going to give him what he wants because he's got more money than God and he cannot be outbid. And so as a result of that, um, I think that that is not an impossibility. And if you bring Soto to this team, all of a sudden now you got a team that can go out there and win big games and be right there with Atlanta and the Phillies as far as the division is concerned. Bottom line is, I know they're going to talk rebuild and sort of restart it and, you know, increase and get better with the farm system and, of course, have the, uh, you know, have Stearns do some things a little differently. Uh, they are going to give Mendoza a chance here, and they're going to try to be a pretty decent little team next year. That doesn't mean they're going to go crazy with the payroll, but if somebody out there that the owner wants, they're going to get them. And if Otani said, you know, I want to come to New York, he's going to sign him. If Soto says, you know, I want to come to New York, I'll sign a long-term contract, the Mets are going to make a trade there and bring him in. So keep that in mind when you're talking about the Mets. They might say one thing for a period of time, but you're not going to convince me that that owner is going to stay out of the way if there's some big free agents out there. The Mets were an embarrassment this year. Uh, he's prideful. He's not 40. He's, you know, he's 
gotten on 70. He wants to win a championship. And I know he grew up as a Yankee fan, but he owns the Mets now. And as a result of that, I think you'll see him go out there and do what he has to do. If it becomes feasible and that player becomes available, I think he'll do that. Now, as far as Mendoza is concerned, who knows? I mean, you know, it's a crapshoot with these managers without any experience. You know, they might be Miller Huggins, but if they don't have a lot to work with, what does that mean? You know, I heard everybody tell me how great Grafal is when he went from Kansas City to the White Sox, and he might be a great manager. Who knows? But the White Sox in 2023 completely imploded, had an incredibly bad year, traded everybody, and the manager didn't, you know, couldn't or didn't have the wherewithal or was out of his control, whatever the case might be, never got fixed, and the White Sox had one of the worst years in the history of the franchise. So you never know what the, uh, who knows? I don't think the Mets are going to go that low and be that bad uh, but you know to sit there and say that you think Mendoza is going to be all of a sudden a great manager because he worked at the uh, I, I know on the heels of Aaron Boone you know I don't buy whatsoever the thing that would concern me about Mendoza a little bit if I was a Met fan the thing that would concern me I don't want the president of baseball operations putting a lineup together I don't want him calling up in the middle of the ball game telling him what bullpen guy to use and the Yankees do a lot of that he was the right-hand man for Boone. You like to think that he's his own man coming in, but it's his first year on the job. He obviously is not going to defy his boss. I don't know Stearns well enough to say that if he does that, but if you think the Mets are not going to give him thousands of data pages on a night-to-night -night basis to look at, you're crazy. And, you know, I would think he's going to adhere to the wishes of the front office as far as third time through the lineup, and, you know, bullpen usage and all that, which drives me crazy when I think of managers because I want managers to go up with what they see, you know, go with their instincts. That's what they get paid for. That's what they're trained for. I'm not sure if Mendoza is going to be able to do that, being this is his first ever job, first time in a big chair, and it is New York City. So we'll have to wait and see how that develops here, if he's going to have to take orders or this is his team, he can do what he wants. The Mets are going to tell you it's his team. But what are they going to say? Yeah, you know what? He's going to do what we... They, 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 of course they're going to tell him. They're going to tell us that. But who knows behind the scenes if at 5 o'clock in the afternoon somebody in that front office is telling Mendoza who to play tonight. Uh, we, you, have no, uh, you have no way of knowing that one way or the other. You take their word for it that that's not the case, but who knows? I, I, I couldn't... I, I'm not going to... They haven't earned that trust to believe them, so I don't know what to believe there. But I have a chance. Hey, listen, everybody swears by him. Good personal relationship kind of guy. Uh, you know, Sean Casey loved him. We talked to him last week. Who doesn't trust Sean? I mean, Boone loves him. Boone's one of the nicest guys in the world. The Cashman loves him. Other ball clubs loved him. So maybe the Mets have hit a home run here with their new manager. Have to wait and see on that. I will say this. I don't think the Mets... Now, would I predict them to win the division? No, I wouldn't necessarily do that. Do I think the Mets can be a playoff team? Absolutely. The Mets can't be a playoff team with Lindor, Alonzo, Senga, Diaz back, Nemo, Marte healthy. Absolutely. Alvarez hit 20-something home runs behind the plate last year. Absolutely. They can be a playoff team, and they're going to do something this winter. The Mets are not going to sit back and let some other team steal the headlines. If that might mean the kid from Japan who's the pitcher, if that might mean kicking the tires on Otani for a couple of headlines, who knows? If that might mean Soto, the Mets will be available at the winter meetings, and they will be heard from. They are the New York Mets with money to, with money to burn in, a, in the biggest market in the world, with the Yankees six miles away. They will do something. That's where we begin on this busy afternoon. It's nice to have you with us on this Tuesday. Alana's in the house here today. She has a chance to edify. Miss Rizzo, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon. I don't have much more to say. I think you covered it, Chris. I think the biggest benefit that Carlos Mendoza has is that he knows what it's like to have to manage or coach, at least, in New York. Obviously, we've talked about the expectations that are surrounding that ball club, the New York Mets, as well as the New York Yankees, and he's not going to be surprised or taken aback by any of the attention or the criticism or the questions, the line of questioning that he's going to get as the Mets manager. One thing I do like is he was telling Steve Gelbs, who does a great job on SNY, who covers 
covers the New York Mets, that he's already had lengthy conversations with a lot of the guys on his new team. He's spoken to Francisco Lindor, which, by the way, happy recent birthday to Francisco Lindor. He has spoken to Pete Alonso. He said that he felt like he was talking to Pete Alonso for about 45 minutes and he could have kept the conversation going. I like that he's reaching out to his players, Edwin Diaz. He's already had conversations with him as well. It'll be interesting to see what the Mets do with Alonso. Are they signing him to a long-term deal? Are they not? What's going to happen in this offseason as far as he is concerned? But at least he's already touching base with his players and getting to know them a little bit. I also like the fact that his parents flew in from Venezuela to be at the uh, press conference. So let's give this man the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, the New York Mets saw something in him that they liked. You know, they know him very well. He's not that far away from him as far as, you know, being with the New York Yankees. So he has some pedigree in the New York system. Um, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't understand why they would let Buck Showalter go. Uh, I'm still a little bit confused about that. I would take Buck Showalter in my deck out in my clubhouse any day but the fact is Buck isn't there anymore so let's give Carlos Mendoza a chance and, and see what he can do uh, with the New York Mets I think obviously um, he's up for the job of course you know you look at all 30 teams across the bigs how many front offices aren't writing the lineups at this point so I know you said that you, you hope that David Stearns isn't writing the lineup but you'd be hard-pressed unless it's the Texas Rangers or maybe the Los Angeles Dodgers you'd be hard-pressed to find an organization that doesn't have the front office very heavily involved in the lineup construction on a daily basis. But I'm looking forward to seeing what Carlos Mendoza can do in New York. That's the biggest negative in the sport. The front offices should do what they do, and the manager should do what he, do he does. And that's the biggest negative in the sport, the influence on a day-to-day -day basis as far as uh, the manager is concerned. But I'm with you 100% on Mendoza. Uh, everybody swears by him. Mets may have hit a home run. They have no way of knowing. They, it, it's a crapshoot, total crapshoot. But hopefully they, uh, you know, they did their due diligence. I'm sure they did. We have to wait and see. Remember, this is David Stern's first ever managerial hire. Council was in Milwaukee when he joined that team as the uh, general manager. So keep that and keep that in mind.